Each and every person in here is a weirdo, I know it. You guys all do weird things. You guys do weird things. I'm going to admit to my weird thing. I like to pee in my backyard, everybody. That's what I like to do. I like to pee in my backyard, yeah. My neighbors don't like it. I think mostly because I live on the fourth floor, everybody. I think that's why they don't like it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep the show rolling. Comic number three, I want you to put your hands together, Mr. Rob Porter, everybody. Rob Porter. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? My name is Mohammed Abdullah. I like you a lot. It's so good to see you. How are you doing? <laughs> I used to be Century 21 agent in Baghdad. Did not go well. I would have three bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse. Bombings would come. One room home with an outhouse, but the schools were phenomenal, my friends, trust me. <laughs> Something tells me I shall open with this voice instead. I know you guys love this. Let's go to Macy's. I can try, you can try on lingerie. I'll tell you if your boyfriend will like it. In Los Angeles, I have to be very careful with that voice. If I'm in the wrong neighborhood, they're like, put him in some leather duggy and let's fucking do this. <laughs> It's not women that notice a size 14 shoe, it's gay men. <laughs> That's not cool to me, man. I don't play for your team. I had one guy walking down the street one night and I heard, nice shoes, what size are those? <laughs> Sorry, dude. I don't do that voice to make fun of gay men. I do it because people don't expect it. I'm a cab driver in Northern Michigan, so I like to mess with people. <laughs> the more I fuck with the drunks, the more they pay me. <laughs> it comes out well. They laugh. I feel better about myself because I look over and I look at them and I go, I'm not nearly as fucked up as you. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> See, I don't get gay men. I get lesbians. I understand that. Women, you guys are soft, sensual, loving, caring. <laughs> you are God's most beautiful creatures. You are also his deadliest. <laughs> Women go from zero to bitch quick and men go from zero to horny. <laughs> My God. I don't get gay men. I look at myself in the mirror and go, I am not going to fuck me. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. I try to figure out how God got, I mean, what's the greatest miracle in the world, ladies? Nine times out of ten. I know you guys know. What's the greatest miracle in the world, what most women say? Childbirth. Yeah. Childbirth. That's number two. The fact that women are attracted to men to make childbirth possible. That's the greatest miracle in the world. And I figured out how God did it. He did not give you all a thermostat. No matter what the temperature it is, your ass could be sitting on the surface of the sun. Your ass and feet are ice cold. I swear, when you go to take a shower before bed, you stick your cheeks in the feet in the freezer. I'm gonna make this motherfucker scream like Michael Jackson. We crawl into bed, you scoot that ass up against us. I suddenly have an urge to go to kinder care at that point. But no, God did not give you guys a thermostat. And it's amazing the differences between men and, when, men and women. And I finally figured out it falls down to one thing. A friend of mine, she was trying to start her car and the car charger, the first cell was in the plug. It wouldn't start. She realized if she pulled it out, it would start. You know what a man's solution would be? Tear the damn car apart trying to find what the hell was shorting the damn thing out. That's our thought process. I realized something, women are cats. Men are that dumb dog from Bugs Bunny. <laughs> okay, whatever you say, I'll do it for you. <laughs> Women, you guys have the attitude of a cat. All right, mister, let's get this shit straight. You are my bitch. I am not yours. I want Ben and Jerry's at 3 a.m. I'll command you to get your ass out of bed and get me Ben and Jerry's at 3 a.m. This is not a request. I don't give a damn. You gotta drive to Detroit, Cleveland, Chicago. You ain't coming back to bed without the Ben and Jerry's in the play where I command. I want you to touch me. I will allow you to touch me. I don't want you to touch me. I'll make this face. <laughs> You guys like to be petted. You curl up in balls to go to sleep. You purr. And I realized before you're born, there's a male contract and a female contract. And you peruse through this to decide which side you're going to join. The male contract is written in crayon. We got misspelled words. Pizza stain in one corner of the page. Pizza stain in the other corner. Some ketchup mustard down the middle from the hot dog. The female contract is written in calligraphy and triplicate. 
with two notarized witnesses. <laughs> and Johnny Cochran representing you, and he's now outside the pearly gates going, God, if the sin don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> Men get control of the remote, women get the phone. Men wonder, or women wonder, is our butts too big? Men wonder, is our junk big enough? <laughs> you guys are allowed to be psychotic, we're allowed to be assholes. <laughs> The one part of the contract I want to know who negotiated this and what the hell was this asshole thinking is the multiple orgasms versus peeing standing up. <laughs> Dudes, we're getting hosed. If we're doing it right, which is rare, but we actually put our mind to it once in a while and do it right, you guys are like a damn M16. <laughs> we're a revolutionary war musket, dudes. <laughs> Powder in, but the one ball in, but the picture ball in. But. I figured out what happened. The representative from your side came to the representative of our side during the intense negotiations and looked at him and said, You would look so sexy if you were eating that apple. Oh shit, I fucked that shit up. See, I was one joke ahead of myself. Anyways, I'll go back. You would look so sexy if you could pee, your name, pee my name in the snow while standing up. You know what he did? Okay, whatever you say, I'll do it for you. I realized that from the Adam and Eve story, that's what the apple comes in. See, everybody blames Adam for eating the apple, right? It was actually Eve. It was her fault. I'm sorry, ladies, it's true. Like, no, here's what happened. You still, when God says don't do something, you don't do it. I'm just saying. <laughs> See, Adam and Eve were chilling in the garden. God spoke. Adam. What up, G? <laughs> Don't eat the apple. That's cool. I like the garden. Eve's awfully cute and easier to shave together, but we got time. Eve, on the other hand, discovered the mushrooms about an hour, hour and a half before she had the chat with the snake. She's talking to a snake. <laughs> and believe in his bullshit. No wonder you believe us. Plucked the apple and didn't feel guilt because in addition to your thermostat, God forgot to give you guys a conscience. She knows she's going down. She's taking the only other motherfucker in the garden down with her. She will not take the rap by herself. Saw it up to Adam, started rubbing his junk up and down and said, you look so sexy. Eating the apple. <laughs> Who's Adam sleeping with dudes? Okay. <laughs> God turned into a bartender at this point. You don't gotta go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> oh, I am all for drugs in society. Certain drugs. The pharmaceuticals, I love how they do that. Don't take these drugs over here. These ones are bad drugs. You might overdose on Twinkies. Take these drugs over here. The ones we make money off of. So the side effects could be you may go blind, your hair may fall out, you may go deaf, your nipples may fall off, your penis may get up and move away, dudes. We're not sure. <laughs> the one for Prozac to help you to overcome depression make you want to kill yourself. <laughs> My favorite one, though, was the one for social anxiety disorder, where if you have trouble being in a large group of people like this, some of the side effects are gas and diarrhea. <laughs> Just what I need to help me overcome my fear of being up here in front of you assholes. But I love you, I say that with love. Is to fart and shit my pants. Then I realized if you stop at Taco Bell on the way to the party, you got a room to yourself. I'll leave you guys with the Twinkie theory because my time's almost up. I developed the Twinkie theory while doing club security in Los Angeles. Yeah, believe it or not. That's why I developed this look to keep my ass alive. I realized how everybody would react to a Twinkie depending on what they were taking. If you have a, you know, 100 stoners in here, you throw in a Twinkie, what, what happens? They divide it up evenly. So everybody gets a piece of the Twinkie. And then pool their money together and see if you guys get more Twinkies and something to drink. You got five drunks in here. You toss in a Twinkie, what happens? One of them grabs it for no apparent reason, beats the living shit out of your four guys with the fucking Twinkie. A meth head, a tweaker. He will sit and try to determine the impact of that Twinkie upon his life for about an hour and a half. <laughs> He'll run circles around the Twinkie for the next hour before tearing it apart, believing that the government stuck a camera in to spy on his ass. <laughs> He'll spend three and a half hours trying to reconstruct said Twinkie before stuffing in a pipe and saying, fuck this, try to get high. <laughs> a guy in cocaine snorts the cream out of the Twinkie and then hides in the corner of the room over there, afraid that the remnants of the Twinkie are going to get revenge on his ass later in the evening. <laughs> 
A guy in heroin stashes the Twinkie and then blames his friends for stealing it. It was those guys right there. <laughs> I knew it was a you. You look guilty when I got up here. A dude on ecstasy will sit and pet the Twinkie for 18 hours because he's a boy. They'll try to have sex with it. And a guy on acid or mushrooms, he'll lock his ass in the bathroom thinking that fucking Twinkie's gonna eat him. <laughs> There's no worry when you need him. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, guys, you have been a wonderful crowd. I thank you for having me up here. Give everybody else a great night. And Cynthia Wilson, thank you for coming with me.